What's up everybody and welcome to another edition of AGR's Pop Culture Reviews. It took me five minutes, that's it. Just five minutes to fall in love with this show. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Netflix original series, Stranger Things. This show has so many influences that I feel that it's important to name all of them. Let us assume the producers of IT, Twin Peaks, E.T., The X-Files, Eerie Indiana, and some video games like Silent Hills and Alan Wake all got together to produce a show. The result would be Stranger Things. In actuality, this show is a throwback to the classic 80s TV series like Friday the 13th the series, Amazing Stories, and other various shows that were produced by Steven Spielberg. But it goes well beyond that. It's much more than just nostalgia, and it really stands alone in its own right. I've always been both fascinated and terrified by small towns. And believe me when I tell you, I've been to several small towns in the US. I've always felt that really crazy things happen in small towns, and there's always so many secrets, and the reason that they really don't get out is because they're so isolated that they sometimes can't get out. And one of the real strengths of this show is that it plays upon that fear of isolation. And because of it, the creep factor in this show is incredibly intense. Stranger Things is essentially a mystery thriller. As a young boy goes missing, friends, family, and local police are in a desperate search to find him. Only to really find out that their small town is really not as provincial as they thought, and it hides a lot of secrets. The small town of Hawkins is the perfect backdrop for this show. To be honest with you, it really sets a mood for this series, and it's a character in and of itself. The music in the series also really helps to immerse you in this world. It's fantastic, and it's great to hear 80 synthesizers at work again. I also like the way that they use it in the show. It actually complements it because it's not so overt and in your face. And it's not trying to tell you, hey look, this is the 80s. It's very subtle and it's done really well. And here's the thing, and it's got to be a credit to the direction that the producers and the director decided to go in the show. Although I know this show takes place in the 80s, it's actually really timeless. It's great to see a world where there are no smartphones, where there are no tablets, and most importantly, there's no social media. And that's actually pretty ballsy for a show like this, because most shows want to stay topical, they want to remain relevant with what's going on in pop culture. So I gotta give them a lot of credit for straying away from that. Now, we do have to talk about the characters in the show, obviously, but I'm not gonna go into great detail because I, in my personal opinion, I think it would spoil it for you. So, in order to avoid that, I'm just going to give you a general overview of why these characters are so special. And I got to give real props to the writers here. Now, when I say that these characters are special, I mean every single one of them. <laughs> now, let me start off with Winona Ryder. Wow, Winona Ryder is freaking amazing in this show. Absolutely incredible. Now, I don't know where the hell she's been for the past couple years, but man, she brought it and she brought the thunder. Winona Ryder gives an amazing performance and really is an anachronism for what somebody must go through and plays on the most terrifying fear that a parent can experience, and that's missing a child. It really plays on the phobia and that internal strife that you must have psychologically when you're trying to come to terms with the fact that your child is missing. Now, what Renona Ryder does very brilliantly is she goes through the full spectrum of these emotions. And man, when I tell you that she conveys them, I mean, she really conveys them. Now, David Harborough plays the sheriff in this small town. And I'm not going to talk too much about him, but god damn, this guy is a freaking badass. And I think that's all I'm going to say. Guys, there are way too many child and teenage actors in this show to name them individually. But I will say... I don't know where the hell these people came from. These actors are amazing. Every single one of them. The dialogue in this show is spectacular to begin with, but the fact that these actors deliver their lines so amazingly, so on point, and so realistically, I mean incredibly organically, is truly something amazing. Their instincts are absolutely phenomenal. They understand comedic timing, they understand dramatic timing, and all together they are much more compelling characters because of it. The dialogue in particular between the younger actors is especially relevant because they talk as children their age would actually talk. I mean, you know, it really brought me back to my childhood and I had friends like this. I had friends that talk like this. I can assure you there's nothing quite so disturbing and sobering as a child putting two fingers to their head particularly to their temple, and telling you the bad people are coming. Get it? 
Now, these characters are also very important in another way, in that they're juxtaposed with all the creepy and horrible stuff that's happening in this town. They're also there to serve as a backdrop for another very important theme of the show, and that's friendship and how far you are willing to go to save your friends. Now, as I mentioned before, there are several themes at play here within the show, and one of them that I really caught on to was teenage angst, particularly sexuality and the loss of virginity. Now, most shows tend to stay away from this because they really don't want to tackle it, but I love the way that they actually handled it in this show. Very anticlimactic, as I imagine is really the true experience of most teenagers. You know, like other shows, when they handle this kind of topic, it's basically a warning or a sermon of why you shouldn't have premarital sex, but in this show, they went a different direction, boldly I might add, and just said this is a part of growing up. And it's really a slap in the face to all those parents who try to force feed their daughters the whole Cinderella syndrome, and much to their detriment, I might add. It's almost a little ironic because most of these characters, at least visually, look like a certain phenotype. But what I love about the show and the real brilliance of the writing is that they play against those archetypes. Now, these characters are already incredibly complex to begin with. And what you find out as the show progresses is that these characters go through arcs within arcs. And man, that is probably the best thing about this show. But it doesn't just stop there. This entire series is an homage to the past. Horror films and sci-fi films that can be found throughout the show. Little easter eggs that you notice while you're watching. Things like posters of The Thing, Jaws, The Evil Dead, and Aliens. I also like that much of the supernatural aspects of this show are based in some kind of scientific fact or scientific theory. It goes by the rationale that magic in and of itself is really just technology that hasn't been discovered or hasn't really been proliferated in society yet. I mean, if you think about it for a minute, if you were to travel back in time to the Civil War and you were to show somebody a tablet, they would think it's magic, when really it's just a series of transistors and microchips. And it's really no accident that you're introduced to this world through the eyes of children that are playing Dungeons and Dragons. Before the advent of video games, technology, and everything else that kind of stifles imagination. And I think that's a very important theme of the show. Guys, overall, this is an amazing show. Definitely worth your time. It's only 8 episodes, but I guarantee you, it's 8 hours of your life that you will not regret. So if you haven't already done so, go watch it now. It's on Netflix. Alright guys, so that's my official review on the Netflix original series, Stranger Things. As always, I thank you for tuning in, and I'll see you on the next AGR's Pop Culture Reviews. 